So you have a teenager who is using alcohol. Well, I'm gonna share with you six practical steps that you can take right now that can assist you in that very problem. Hi friend, my name is Bernie from Tiger Resilience where we offer addiction solutions for family members and friends who have a loved one struggling with addictions. To start with, this story was inspired by a couple I just recently worked with who had a 16 year old daughter that they found out was drinking from their home. I'm going to go into that story and give you the resolution to it, which is really inspiring, but I'm going to first go through these six practical steps that you can take right now to assist you in helping your teenager dealing with alcohol. So the very first step is we're going to have to choose a right time to set up the conversation to start in the first place. Obviously, the first level of this is creating communication and you need to choose the right time. And so what do I mean by that is that if they are literally were drinking and you caught them and they come home, that's not the right time. You know, if you knew that they had picked up a, a drink and they're actively using and they're at the house or they're up in the room, uh, you come in and there's a small party going on, whatever that may look like as far as catching them with the alcohol itself, that is not the right time. You need to set up a separate time, you know, probably after school or on a weekend where you can set, set up the time to actually have the conversation with them, where you can have a couple of hours of uninterrupted time. And it is absolutely imperative because nothing can happen until you know you have the right set of circumstances to have the relaxed, quiet mode for them when you're able to sit down and start that communication process. So then what else can you do? After you set down that right time, the next thing is that you are going to listen to them with the intent to understand them first before you respond. Okay, so let, let me restate that. You're listening with the intention to understand them. You want to hear like what happened, how, how what, what brought you to this point, what's going on. Let them explain from their heart. You want to listen with the intention to understand them thoroughly with empathy and caring. You do not want to make judgment and you do not want to respond to them with your autobiography, such as, you know, they speak and they're sharing what happened and you're like, listen, I did that as a kid. You can't do that. That's just the wrong thing to happen. That is not the way to approach this. The best possible outcome you can have is by listening with the intention to understand them and let them know that they are being heard, which takes us to the third step here. And the third step is validate that they are being heard. And what I mean by that is that you are actually going to paraphrase back exactly what they're sharing with you. Allow them that opportunity to open up. That's why I mentioned that you have a time set aside and usually give yourself a couple of hours in case this really gets involved in a story of what's happening. So allowing them to know that they're being heard and they feel that they're going to be heard, that's where the communication is really going to start to bond. That's where you're going to find where you're going to really find out what's going on and get to some roots of some problems and the end. Answers. So next, your question is going to be simple. Really, why are you drinking? Is it something that's important to you? Can you share what is going on and why that would be important to you? Now, this is an important question because sometimes it could just be a plain moment of experimentation. You know, they went to a party, they had alcohol first time ever. They come home, they were, you know, a little inebriated and you are obviously concerned about it, but it was a, it was a one time only. It was an experimentation. Or it's something that they've been doing a few times and they like it, and then there's a concern about that. Well, what is it that you like about it? And we'll talk about that in a second. But it's really to ask them, what, why does this matter to you? Why do you have to drink? You know, in many cases, it's gonna be a very different story. You know, certainly there may be your own experiences. And remember, you're approaching this from their perspective, not your autobiography. So once you understand now at this point, well, what is it that's important to them and why does it matter? It's gonna help you set up the directions that you go in in the next steps. So next, you wanna discuss the negative effects of alcohol. This is important because it's a step that sometimes parents don't take. In other words, your child maybe tried a few times drinking, had a little bit of a intoxication, but you weren't aware of it. And now they get their driver's license and they get their first DUI at the age of 17 or 18 or 19 years old. And they were not really completely educated and informed. You can't leave this for a school system to be able to do this because you will definitely not be successful. You need to explain to them what 
this does. What does alcohol do? How does it impact you with your school? How does it impact you with work? How does it impact you physically if you're in sports, activities with others? It's very important to give this information. And in the description below, you will find the National Institution of Drug and Alcohol, and that website will give you a plethora of information regarding all things that you would need to know about alcohol. Certainly much more that I can encompass on this one video here. So absolutely discuss the impact of alcohol. So then what do we do next? Then you have to agree upon some consequences and your parent role. So agreed upon consequences are you need to ask them, well, if you are drinking, what do you think should happen? I mean, get solicit it from them. If you have a relationship with them, I'm sure that you're gonna come up with an understood aspect of what can happen and what would those consequences be if they respond that well i wouldn't do anything just let me drink you know you you may have some other communication challenges that you need to work through first before you get to this step so discussing this what are the consequences and having them agree to it is imperative because it becomes a mutual expectation of the both parties and if you're only telling them that this is what's going to happen what you're doing you're starting off with a resistance you're creating a barrier you're also breaking down an opportunity for communication because the second part of this is the parent's role. The hope and, ex and expectation from your part is that if they were at a party and they were drinking alcohol, that they could call you no matter what time it is and say, you know, mom and dad, I, I, I was drinking, um, you know, I don't know, I can't drive, I have nothing, I don't know how to get home, uh, I'm really concerned, you know, as particularly if, if driving is involved with this, you need to let them know and reassure right off the bat, I will be there for you no matter what, no matter what time it is, I will come for you and I will be there for you. I will be there to help you and will get you home safely. That's a powerful role that you play on as a parent. And it's imperative for you to have that role because you want to have that level of communication open with them. The more that you can talk with them, the more that you can have a conversation with them, the more that you are engaged in their life, the more they will disclose to you, the more open they will be about it. And that is the whole goal here is to create an open, cohesive level of communication that both you and the child can have and discuss no matter what is happening in their lives so you can be aware of it. And that's such an important part because I'm going to share with you the ending story that I started with during this podcast. And that is simply the parents that I shared the story with and their daughter, this 16 year old daughter, she was sneaking drinks from their liquor cabinet uh, on a weekday during the nighttime. And she was doing that for a period of time until dad was able to identify liquor was missing and then had a conversation and she opened up and said, yes, I was drinking. And the reason being two, twofold here, and it's very important. The first is that she needed to sleep. She was having some challenges with sleeping. And she saw her uncle, which was mom's brother, who had been and had an issue with alcohol, would come to the house during certain parties and he would pass out. He would be asleep on the couch, snoring away from too much alcohol consumption. And she realized that that could be a tool to help her sleep. She was having challenges sleeping. So what was the bigger issue? Why was she having challenges sleeping? Well, after some prodding and learning and listening with the intention to understand her, she shared that she was having some bullying issues at school and it was really weighing on her very heavy and she could not sleep because she could not get it out of her mind. So twofold this understanding why she was doing this and now we're able to resolve the problem. What was the real problem? Being bullied at school. And then the parents were able to work with the school, work with her and resolve this situation and also resolve how she responds to those situations so that she can change that, not to let these things bother her at all. And also again, to have the school involved with this to help as an intervention. So I really hope that you find this information useful. These six steps work across the board. As a professional clinician, I've been doing this for a long time and they are absolutely the way to communicate. They are the way to work with a teenager who is struggling or is drinking alcohol and you want to intervene on this process. Again, my name is Bernie from Tiger Resilience, where we offer addiction solutions for family members and friends struggling with an addiction. If you like this video, please consider liking this video so that we can pay this forward. It would be greatly appreciated. I thank you once again for your time and your busy schedule, and I'll look forward to speaking with you very soon again. Welcome to Tiger Resilience Addiction Solutions for Reaching Human Potential. 
where we provide effective resources, assistance, and coaching for family members and their loved ones who are struggling with challenges with addiction. 